Hello and welcome to a discussion on comprehensive budgets. We will discuss how to prepare a comprehensive budget and how budgets are used to manage the business. After viewing this video, you will be able to describe the purpose of a budget and the different individual budgets. You will be able to prepare different individual budgets and use these budgets to prepare a cash budget and budget financial statements. The comprehensive budget serves many purposes. It forces management to plan for the future and to determine how to use resources most appropriately to accomplish company goals. The budget coordinates the efforts of the entire company and serves as a tool for evaluating management performance. The process of completing an annual master budget serves to orient management towards common goals and it also encourages collaboration. The comprehensive budget is used as a formal plan for allocating resources. The controller is responsible for preparing the budget and is assisted by the managerial or cost accountant. The master budget begins with a monthly sales budget that is provided by sales managers after conversation with customers and potential customers and considering the growth in the market. The monthly sales budget determines the units that are produced each month. The production budget begins with the number of units to be produced and estimates the amount of product costs that are expected to be incurred. Period expenses are estimated by the managers of the various functional departments. The budget process includes all the operations and cost of the company. It includes estimating the timing and magnitude of direct material, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead cost. It includes estimating the cost of warehouse operations that support the production process and the cost of operating the business, acquiring, and supporting customers. The capital expenditures budget includes long-term decisions and does the proper analysis to ensure that investments in assets will give an acceptable return. The production budget is used to estimate the required resources for direct materials, direct labor, and manufacturing overhead cost. Management decides the optimal level of direct materials and finished goods, and the budget is used to maintain inventory. The goal is to not run out of direct materials or finished goods and to store the minimum amount to reduce the cost of warehousing. Let's talk about the most common types of budgeting. The first is a self-imposed budget where top management sets the overall goals and management at all levels budget the resources required to accomplish the goal. The second is called the traditional approach. This year's budget begins with last year's budget and last year's budget is revised to incorporate changes in the strategic business plan for the upcoming year. The third type is called zero-based budgeting. Management starts from the ground up and determines what resources are needed without considering prior year cost or budget. A continuous budget covers a rolling 12 months. As one month passes, another month is added, and the budget is always a forecast of the next 12 months. The most appropriate type of budget depends on how the, the growth stage of the business is and how often the operations of the company change. The comprehensive master budget consists of 13 individual budgets. The first 10 are summarized on the cash budget that pulls them all together to forecast the amount of cash that must be borrowed or can be invested each month. The budget income statement and the balance sheet are also prepared using the information from the individual budgets. Each individual budget is done by month for 12 months. The process begins with the sales budget. Sales in units is projected by the sales management team. The units are multiplied by the sales price per unit to get the total sales dollars. The sales budget will be used to complete the collections budget for sales on credit. The production budget uses the sales in units and the finished goods inventory to determine the number of units that must be produced. Ending inventory is added because this is the extra amount that must be produced to have units left in the warehouse. The beginning finished goods 
are subtracted because they are already in the warehouse and do not need to be produced. The production budget is the starting point for determining the three product cost budgets. The direct materials budget determines the quantity of materials that must be purchased to produce the units and have the desired amount of materials left in inventory. The number of units to be made is multiplied by the quantity of materials for each unit to get the total quantity that is needed to make all units. The ending inventory management wants to have in the warehouse is added because this is the extra that needs to be purchased. The beginning inventory is subtracted because it is already in the warehouse and does not need to be purchased. This gives the quantity to be purchased. Quantity multiplied by cost per unit gives the dollar amount that must be purchased each month. This budget is done for each type of direct materials needed to manufacture products. Direct labor is a product cost, so it begins with the number of units to be produced. The number of units to produce multiplied by the quantity of hours required to make one unit gives the total direct labor hours necessary to make all products. Multiplying the quantity of hours needed by the cost per hour gives the estimated direct labor cost to make all the products. This is done for each type of direct labor. The direct labor budget typically assumes that employees will be paid in the period the work is done. The manufacturing overhead budget covers both variable and fixed manufacturing overhead. Total variable cost will change, so the number of units to be produced multiplied by the quantity required for each unit gives the total quantity of the manufacturing overhead activity required. The quantity required multiplied by the variable manufacturing overhead rate gives the estimated cost. Fixed manufacturing overhead will not change with changes in the number of units produced. The total amount for the month is added to get the expected total manufacturing cost. The individual budgets are cash budgets. Depreciation expense is not paid in cash, so it is subtracted to get to the total cash expected to be paid for manufacturing overhead. The word disbursement means cash paid. The finished goods budget is used to prepare the budget balance sheet. The quantity of desired ending inventory is multiplied by the total cost for each unit to get the total value of finished goods at the end of the period. The selling and administrative expense budget must consider that some costs are variable and some are fixed. Variable is based on the units expected to be sold. Fixed is the total amount expected to be incurred for the period. Depreciation expense is subtracted because it will not be paid. This budget estimates the amount of cash that will be paid during the period and assumes that payment will occur in the period the expense is incurred. The cash collections budget is used to estimate when cash will be collected for sales on credit. The accountant must look at past customer payment history and estimate the percent of sales during a current month that will be collected in that month, in the following month, or the month after that. Generally, collections occur during a three-month period. For example, the January row projects the amount of credit sales in January that will be received from customers in future months. The accountant is estimating that 10% will be collected in the month of the sale, 60% will be collected during the month after the sale, and 28% will be collected during the second month after the sale. The total is only 98% because the company expects 2% to not be collected. To prepare this budget, first state the credit sales for all months. Next, put the percent that is expected to be collected for each month on the row of the sales. Then for each row, multiply the sales dollars by the percent to get the dollar amount to be collected in that month. Total the amounts for the month and use them for the cash budget. The 
cash disbursements budget is used to estimate when cash will be paid for purchases of direct materials purchased on account. The accountant looks at the company payment history and estimates the percent of purchases for the month that will be paid in future months. Generally payments are made over a two month period. The January row projects the amount of January purchases that will be paid in each month. The accountant is estimating that 30% will be paid in the same month as the purchase and 70% will be paid the month after the purchase. To prepare this budget, state the total purchases from the direct materials budget for, the, for each month. Next, put the percent that is expected to be paid for each month on the row of the purchase. Then for each row, multiply the purchase dollars by the percent in the column to get the dollar amount expected to be paid in that month. The total amounts for the month will be used on the cash budget. The cash budget is the summary of each of the individual budgets, capital expenditures, and plans to pay dividends. The cash budget begins with the ending cash balance from the prior period. Cash collections from customers are added next. Cash paid for the three product costs are generally listed before cash paid for all period cost. The company also estimates amounts that will be paid for capital expenditures, property plant equipment, and for dividends paid to shareholders. Companies generally have a minimum cash balance that they want to keep in the bank in order to ensure the ability to pay employees and suppliers. When the excess cash is lower than the minimum amount, the company borrows under the short-term debt called a line of credit. Lines of credit amounts are repaid in future months when cash is available. Interest on borrowings is paid periodically. The sum of all the individual budgets will get you to the cash balance at the end of the period. The individual budgets and the cash budget are used to prepare the income statement. The sales come from the sales budget. The cost of goods sold uses the sales in units from the sales budget and the total cost for one unit stated on the cost sheet. Operating expenses were estimated on the period expense budget. Income tax is a standard percentage of operating income. Items needed for the budget balance sheet are estimated by individual budgets. Notice that all amounts on the balance sheet are not listed. The accountant uses last year's balance and some judgment to estimate other amounts on the balance sheet. Cash comes from the ending balance on the cash budget. Accounts receivable is the amount of sales not yet collected from the cash budget at the end of the period. Long-term assets are changed by the amount on the capital expenditures plan. And accounts payable is the amount on the cash disbursements budget that are not yet paid at the end of the period. Interest payable is computed based on expected borrowings and retained earnings is adjusted for projected income and dividends. After viewing this video, you should be able to describe the purpose of a budget and the different individual budgets. You should also be able to prepare individual budgets and use these budgets to prepare a cash budget and budget financial statements. Please log on to studymyaccounting.com. The practices you learn will give you examples and explanations of each of the concepts discussed in this video. Then work the practice test to verify your understanding. Write the answers out and check your answers. Please go ahead and write them out. It will help you really get it. Thank you for being prepared for class. It is much appreciated.